College List Deathmatch 2024 Presidential Election Special Edition. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, that's areyouontracktogetin.com, at which you will complete a free three-minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away, and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. I've done a number of these videos over the years where we put one college up against the other, and they're competing for the last spot on your college list. But today we're doing it with a twist where we're comparing the colleges of the presidential candidates in the U.S. election 2024. And here are our candidates. We have Kamala Harris, who is representing the Democrats. And we have Donald Trump, who is representing the Republicans. We have Jill Stein, who is representing the Green Party. And we have someone named Chase Oliver, who is representing the Libertarians. Now, I will take out Chase right from the start because Chase did not go to college, as far as I know, and he did not earn a degree. So he has unilaterally disarmed from this college list death match. So we're down to three candidates. Jill Stein went to Harvard as an undergrad. Donald Trump graduated from Penn as an undergrad, but he started at Fordham up in New York City, in the Bronx to be exact. And Kamala Harris, who started at a place called Vanier College, but ultimately transferred to Howard University. Those are the colleges we're discussing today in this three-way college list death match. Of course, it's quite ironic because many individuals are very interested in associating their undergraduate studies with an institution of status and there is no institution of status probably better known across the world than Harvard. And Jill Stein, of course, has had a very impressive career. But Jill Stein is not expected to be a real competitor in this year's presidential election as it relates to garnering enough electoral votes, if any, to really compete for the presidency of the United States. But many people may vote for her and Chase Oliver, who we already eliminated, uh, nonetheless, because of uh, ideological alignment, which is wonderful. But, but again... We have someone who went to Harvard, lovely school, lovely school, but Harvard doesn't win the day. Just because you go to Harvard doesn't mean you're going to win the presidential election, though obviously many individuals who've gone to Harvard have gone on to great success in politics. Jill Stein, uh, at this point, is uh, not going to most likely win unless something very earth-shattering happens on Tuesday, the 5th of November, 2024. Uh, but Harvard's a great school, and one would argue that uh, if you're looking for status alone, Harvard is the winner of the College List Death Match. But this particular edition of College List Death Match is not just about what college to put on your college list. It's also about what does the college say about the student, and especially when these students went to college. Now, Jill Stein going to Harvard when she did is quite impressive. Obviously, we don't know the entire backstory on how she got in, if it was through phone calls or if it was through truly earned amazing grades. But... Anyone going to Harvard when she went to Harvard uh, was treated with an air of great respect because at though in those days in particular, Harvard was known as a place of individuals of great pedigree academically and in other ways. Uh, now, again, things have, of course, changed at all institutions in the United States these days where no college is so associated with a particular brand any longer. But at the time that Jill Stein went to Harvard, uh, it was definitely operating on all cylinders reputationally. Uh, but let's take a look at the other two candidates, Kamala and we have Donald. And those two candidates are interesting because uh, they both started at one college and ended at another. And I think this is the real moral of today's video, which is where you start does not indicate where you will finish. And oh my gosh, look at where Kamala started. Kamala started in a place called Vanier College up in Quebec, Montreal. And we all know that no one has heard of that in the United States. <laughs> Just because no one's heard of it doesn't mean you can't go into great things. So keep that in mind with you. As you think about your undergraduate degree, it's not always about where you start. It's about where you finish that will ultimately determine your success. And Kamala has determined how to become very successful 
without starting at the most well-known college to Americans, particularly. Uh, but she ultimately transferred. It took her five years to earn her undergrad degree. Uh, so she spent, uh, you know, five full years from start to finish. She graduated from a historically black university, Howard University, in Washington, D.C. And at the time that she went there, of course, Howard did not have the highest of admission standards. It still does not have the highest of admission standards. Uh, but that that doesn't matter because individuals can go there and grow, go into great success and learn quite a bit while at Howard. But it is in D.C. You have to be an urban uh, enthused individual to want to go to any institution in an urban center in the United States. And Kamala Harris clearly was someone who wanted to be in an urban center at that time. And she spent a good amount of time there uh, uh, before graduating. Uh, Howard is again as an individual school, as an individual school is a school that is primarily black undergraduate population. Uh, though again, based off the recent Supreme Court ruling, it is not supposed to discriminate in one way, shape, or form. So there can be white students there, there can be Hispanic students, there can be individuals of Asian descent and so forth. But it is generally a school that attracts uh, black students. And so Kamala Harris, uh, as someone who has both a black parent as well as a South Asian parent, uh, was clearly attracted to transferring to Howard after spending a year at Vanier up in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Now, what about Donald Trump? Donald Trump, I will say, did attend, so this is sort of unfair. I attended the same institution as Donald Trump. I went to Penn, but I'd started at Penn, but Donald Trump did not. Donald Trump started at Fordham. He could not get into Penn right off the bat. Maybe, I don't know if he even applied to Penn or he was rejected or what happened, but ultimately he started at Fordham. He spent two years there and then he transferred to uh, Penn, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He went to the Warden School, as he likes to always uh, make very clear. He, he almost mentions Warden. He says the Warden School of Finance. Uh, of course, that's really not the full name of it any longer. It's Warden. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a business school, at the undergraduate and graduate business school, of course, at Penn. But he ultimately, Donald Trump, did get his undergraduate degree uh, from the Warden School of Business, Warden, at University of Pennsylvania. And to this day, of course, Warden is a very uh, in-demand undergraduate business institution. I will say I did not go to Warden. I went to the College of Arts and Sciences at Penn. So even though we both went to Penn at, in different decades, we, in fact, uh, did not actually go to the same school at Penn. Now, I will say I, Donald Trump was at my graduation. He was at my graduation from the University of Pennsylvania because Ivanka Trump graduated from my class at Penn. She, too, graduated from Warden. I graduated again from the College of Arts and Science, and it's interesting, but Ivanka, too, did not start at Penn. She transferred into Warden, I think, after going to Georgetown, if I recall correctly, for her first two years. It was actually hard uh, to go to transfer at all these times to Penn, uh, Warden. It was obviously easier the further you go back. It was hard by the time Ivanka did it, but now it's, it's basically impossible. They changed the rules. Actually, during Donald Trump's first presidency, they changed the rules of how you can transfer into Penn. So it's it's basically impossible now to transfer into Warden, into Warden in particular, uh, as an undergraduate transfer student. So what's the moral of the story here? Well, they're both urban schools for the leading candidates. Penn is urban. So is D.C.'s Howard. At both schools, frankly, they started out relatively urban too. Vanier up in, in Canada and Fordham, of course, up in New York City as well. Uh, but the real moral of the story here, I think, and maybe will make you feel great today if you're a student or a parent of a student who is unsure of him or herself in terms of where they're going, maybe they're going to switch, is both leading candidates transferred undergraduate institutions. So keep that in mind. Where you start does not determine where you will finish. Life is dynamic. Things change. Life is what happens when you're busy making plans, as they often say. And so both of our leading presidential candidates in the 2024 election uh, had the presence of mind to say, this is not the right fit for me. I want to transfer. And they both did successfully. And the rest, as they say, is history. But in terms of the schools mentioned today, there's no question that if it's all about status, you're with Jill Stein. If you're all about uh, focusing on uh, getting to know uh, one's identity and being in an environment that really supports particular types of students identity-wise, historically, of course, Howard University is probably renowned most for that. 
And then we also have University of Pennsylvania, uh, which of course is known for a number of strong disciplinary areas, but particularly business. And that's where uh, uh, Donald Trump, the Republican presidential candidate, graduated from. But again, all urban schools for the most part uh, in terms of even Boston, you know, Massachusetts and Cambridge is for uh, Jill Stein. So where, where, which school should you pick for your college list death match a presidential election edition? I don't know. I Ultimately, this is very hard. This is a personal preference uh, conversation as it always is. Uh, but ultimately, if I had to pick one in terms of dynamism for all the different types of programs, undergraduate programs that you would want to consider yeah, switching into, though it's, again, like I said, harder uh, at Penn these days to switch into particular majors than it has ever been once you start. But with everything else in mind, if you're just going to do an undergraduate degree and not go into graduate school, I would probably say all other things being equal, you know, having Penn, having a business school and engineering school at the undergraduate level, Harvard really doesn't have uh, that at the undergraduate level, uh, then I would probably settle on where I went to school, which is University of Pennsylvania. It doesn't make it the best school. It just makes it the winner of today's edition of College List Deathmatch, College List Edition, whatever, Presidential uh, Candidate Edition. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, go out and vote if you're 18 years old or older in the United States. By all means, do it. For your country, do it for your soul, do it for your willingness and ability to be a citizen of the freest country on earth. And I wish everyone the very best. I wish safety and security and health and prosperity to all, no matter one's political affiliation. Now, let's say you really want to go to Fordham or Penn or Howard or Harvard and you finished your common app and you want to know if it's as strong as possible and whether or not in its current condition, your chances of admission to one of these universities or another is impressive, inconclusive, or inadequate. You need my pre-read. Getting my pre-read now means having me review your entire application, just like an admissions officer or admissions committee will review it later, and receiving by email no later than the time you reserve a comprehensive report highlighting what's working and what's not on your full Common App and one Common App supplement. If you've yet to submit your Common App, my pre-read may motivate you to make adjustments to it before your deadline. If you've already submitted your Common App, my pre-read will prepare you for what I deem to be your likely admissions outcome at the institution in question. To purchase my pre-read now, go to myprereread.com. Again, that's myprereread.com. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process, go to my website, which is collegemeister.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the presidential election and the college admissions process.